Hi everyone, welcome sa channel ko. Ako pala si Janos ng Pinoy Tech Dad. Today, pag-usapan natin itong Vivo V25e. So, this one isn't the normal or regular V25. Ito yung merong MediaTek G99 na chipset na I'm excited to check out dahil ito yung first time na makahawak ako ng G99 na chipset on a phone. And kung napapansin nyo guys, ito yung second phone natin na Vivo in gold color. This one is the Sunrise Gold and merong special dito dahil meron tong photochromic back which means... Pwede magbago yung kulay ng phone na to pag natamaan ng direct sunlight na ipapakita ko sa inyo dito sa sample. And para lang matanggal yung suspense, yung pangatlong phone po na feature ko soon is this one, the Vivo Y16 in drizzling gold. Budget level naman po ito but this will be for another video. For now, check out muna natin yung quick unboxing nitong Vivo V25e. Alright, so that was our quick unboxing ng Vivo V25e and napaka-cool lang na meron tayong kasamang earphones, wired earphones at that. And it's also cool guys that this one is actually branded as the FIFA World Cup in Qatar 2022 na official smartphone. So para sa mga fans ng football or soccer, this is a nice touch. But anyway, going back to the phone, pag-usapan na natin yung ports and yung design nito. So simula muna tayo sa bottom, meron tayong SIM card tray. This one can either be a dual SIM or one SIM plus a micro SD card. So hybrid SIM card slot po siya. And meron tayong microphone, a USB-C charging port, and a downfiring speaker. Sa kanan naman, nandyan yung power button natin and yung volume rockers. And then on top, meron tayong noise cancelling microphone. On the left side, wala pong kaganapan, very clean, wala tayong makikita ports or any buttons. And kung hinahanap nyo yung fingerprint scanner, nandito po yan, optical fingerprint scanner dahil meron tong AMOLED na display. Pero balikan natin yung likod nito, ito nga ay merong photochromic 2.0 na feature which means pag tinamaan ito ng UV light as you've seen in the intro, magbabago po yung kulay ng back panel nito. So this one again is the Sunrise Gold. Very good looking as it is but mapapawaw ka na lang pag nakita mong nagbabago yung kulay niya in direct sunlight. So very minimalist pa rin yung design niya and hindi siya kapitin ng fingerprint or smudges dahil matte finish and yung camera module nito, very elegant looking, super classy yung design. Meron tayong gold trimming sa camera lenses niya. Meron tayong dual lenses na makikita nyo yung proportional yung size nila. So para silang twin lenses but actually they're very quite different. So the first one is a 64 megapixel lens Lens. And the other one is a 2 megapixel bokeh lens. And meron din tayong maliit na lens dito. This one is a 2 megapixel macro lens. So yan po yung camera setup natin. Triple camera setup. And of course, ipapakita ko sa inyo yung camera samples later on in the video. And just to continue yung usapang design, meron ditong 2.5D na display. So that means merong very slight curve dito sa edge ng display. But it's not the same as a curved edge display. Basta pag nahawakan nyo to and nakita nyo in person, makikita nyo na medyo may konting angat yung display niya but it's still a very flat phone and it just adds to the depth and feel ng phone na to na mas maganda siyang hawakan in one hand. Dahil marami magtataka ko ano ba talaga yung meaning ng 2.5D na design so ito po yun. Again, may konting angat lang po. So overall, very happy ako with the design of this phone. It really feels so good in one hand. And talagang trendy and very eye-catching yung design niya. It's simple, it's elegant, it's classy. And again, I like this style of camera module. But anyway, tama na muna yung usapang design. Pag-usapan naman natin next yung performance. Ano nga ba yung maaasahan nyo sa phone na to? 
So meron tong MediaTek G99 na chipset. This one is an evolution dahil meron na tayo sa wakas 6 nanometer na G99 chipset. This one is a big leap pagdating sa efficiency ng chipset dahil yung mga previous G90 series ay eh nasa 12 nanometer fabrication. Again, this one is a 6 nanometer fabrication which means this one is gonna be more power efficient and makakatipid talaga kayo sa battery pag ito yung ginamit nyo na phone. Now, aside sa chipset ng G99, meron din pala tong 8 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage and then meron silang pangako na magkakaroon ng 8 gigabytes of extended RAM in the future through an update. So, ang magiging total usable RAM mo is effectively 16 gigabytes. And pagdating naman sa actual benchmark nitong G99 chipset, nakakuha tayo ng 383,000 Antutu benchmark points. This is a decent benchmark para sa isang mid-range device. But of course, kung gusto nyo ng more power, pwede nyo rin tingnan yung mga chipsets tulad ng Dimensity 8100. Pero base naman sa actual usage ko nitong Vivo V25e, solid yung performance niya. Hindi naman akong nakulangan sa power niya. So, syempre, hindi-hindi ito mahirapan sa mga regular apps na ginagamit nyo for social media like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok or kung nagbabrowse ka lang ng internet, eh, maning-mani lang yan dito sa G99 ng Vivo V25e. Now, kung gaming naman ang usapan, ito yung mga settings na ginamit ko na hindi ako nagka-aberya. And by the way, guys, meron din pala tong Ultra Game Mode and Multi-Turbo para mas mapaganda pa talaga lalo yung gaming performance mo, mas ma-optimized. At para pwede mo rin i-cancel out yung mga notifications just in case na ayaw mo munang madistorbo habang naglalaro ka. So sa Mobile Legends, meron lang po tayong high refresh rate and high graphics settings. So wala po tayong ultra frames and ultra graphics. And of course, as to be expected, very smooth yung gameplay ng Mobile Legends dito sa V25e. And para naman sa League of Legends Wild Drift, Hanggang 60 frames yung frame rate and yung graphics quality sinagat ko sa super high and yung resolution super high din. And yung effects quality naka high as well. And kinaya naman ng Vivo V25e yung lahat ng settings na yan. Para sa Call of Duty Mobile naman, meron pa lang muna tayong medium graphical quality and high frame rates. So, I'm expecting na dadami pa yung options natin sa graphics once ma-optimize na tong Helio G99 para dito sa V25e. But overall, very smooth yung gameplay pa rin dito sa Call of Duty Mobile. Of course, very low lang naman yung graphical settings na available for now. So you can expect talaga na wala kang lag na may experience dito sa phone na to. And para sa Genshin Impact naman, nasa medium graphical settings po yung ginamit ko na settings. And hindi naman ako nagkaroon na masyadong maraming frame drops. Of course, there's frame drops every now and then. But hindi naman siya masyadong noticeable unless isagad mo to high or highest yung graphical settings dito sa Genshin Impact. Now, if gusto mo talaga super smooth, pwede mo pang isagad sa lowest graphical settings and mapapatakbo ng maayos itong Vivo V25e yung Genshin Impact. Now, siguro kung merong downside pagdating sa performance is that wala siyang dedicated cooling system unlike the Vivo V25 and the V25 Pro. And then also, yung touch sampling rate niya is 180 Hz lang. So, hindi ganun kataasan yung touch sampling rate niya. But overall, yung gaming experience ko dito is very decent. Wala naman ako na experience na deal breaker as a casual gamer. Na kung hardcore gamer ka, hindi ito yung perfect fit na phone para sa'yo. Mas nababagay talaga siya para sa mga casual gamers na tulad ko. Okay, so usapang camera naman. So isa to sa mga binibida talaga ng Vivo para sa V25e. So how is the performance of the 64 megapixel camera? Yan po malalaman natin dito sa mga bibigay ko sa inyong samples ng pictures and videos as well. So this one again has a 64 megapixel main shooter and a 2 megapixel bokeh lens and also a 2 megapixel macro lens. Now if I'm gonna be honest, I didn't really use the macro lens too much. I focused on the 64 megapixel camera and so far yung outcome niya is really good for the price that you're gonna pay for this in broad daylight hindi kayo magkakaroon ng problema dito maganda yung makukuha yung mga sample shots although for me hindi ganun ka pop out yung colors niya hindi ganun saturated but I guess for someone like me na nag -e edit muna ng photos bago i-upload sa social media hindi naman malaking bagay yon dahil pwede nga nating i-adjust yan sa mga editing software natin. But when it comes to the details and the sharpness, I'm happy with the outcome. And yung HDR niya is good enough. Maganda yung dynamic range na nakukuha niya kahit na sobrang liwanag ng sky, hindi blown out. 
Na pagdating naman sa mga challenging scenarios like itong sunset, makikita nyo na medyo lumiit yung sun. So naging super aggressive yung high dynamic range niya or yung HDR niya dahil sobrang kinontrol niya yung ilaw nung araw which is supposedly shining bright on the beach. At pagdating naman sa indoor shots, although hindi masyadong well-lit yung room na to, maganda pa rin yung mga kinalabasan na family photos na kinuna namin. Pagdating naman sa mga night shots or night scenery, eh maganda rin yung night mode nito. Talagang napapaliwanag niya lalo yung environment just in case na medyo challenging yung lighting scenario ng kinukunan nyo. Just as long as meron pa rin source of light, eh mag adjust accordingly itong Vivo V25e. Now, sa selfie camera naman, pagdating sa photos, wala po akong reklamo. Maganda po yung mga kinalabasan na photos. Although, nasa softer side, pero nansyon pa rin yung details and hindi po nagkakaroon ng watercolor effect kahit na medyo low light scenario yung picture namin. Meron lang talagang konting beautification na nangyayari which you can turn off naman if you really don't like that effect. Now, on to the video side naman guys, hanggang 1080p, 60 frames per second lang po yung meron. I really wish na umabot man lang sana ng 4K, 30 frames per second para mas mataas yung resolution natin. But, it is what it is. So, tingnan natin kung ano yung kakayahan nitong 1080p, 60 frames per second dahil meron daw tong OIS plus EIS. Is it the same as what we'd expect from the higher-end phones na merong both OIS and EIS? Well, for me, not quite. Dahil dito sa sample natin, pinapakita ko sa inyo, nasa sasakyan tayo. And syempre, yung road na dinadaanan natin, hindi naman talaga smooth surface yan all throughout. So may mga bumpy parts and makikita nyo na umuuga-uga pa rin paminsan-minsan yung video natin. Pero syempre, kung maglalakad lang kayo ng handheld na hindi kayo masyadong magalaw, stable naman overall yung makukuha yung video. Pero I would advise na you get a gimbal for this if talagang seryoso na pag-video ang gagawin nyo with your Vivo V25e dahil hindi pa rin talaga siya kasing stable ng mga higher-end cameras na merong OIS and EIS. And just a quick overview guys, ito po yung ilan sa mga camera features na available dito sa Vivo V25e. So meron tayong 64 megapixel mode, merong panorama, live photo, slow motion, time-lapse, pro mode, AR stickers, Meron din tayong vlog, movie, documents, double exposure, and dual video. I'm pretty sure marami din sa inyo ang interested and curious kung meron tong dual view. And ito na po, kinoconfirm natin, available ang dual view feature dito sa Vivo V25e. So yun po yung camera discussion natin. Overall, for photos, very happy ako sa results nitong Vivo V25e. As for videos, ang wish ko lang talaga is sana nagkaroon to ng 4K video resolution. Next, punta naman tayo sa display discussion. So this one has a 6.44-inch AMOLED display with 90 hertz refresh rate. I'm really not sure bakit hindi naka-indicate sa box nila mismo na AMOLED yung display nito. But yeah, Again, your fingerprint sensor niya is optical, so that means this has an AMOLED display and napaka vibrant and napaka ganda ng kulay niya. Of course, when you say AMOLED, it's infinite contrast. Black is truly black. Hindi po hype yan. Legit po yan pagdating sa mga AMOLED display talaga. Yan yung maasahan nyo. Sayang nga lang at wala pa tong HDR capability. But overall, very good naman tong display nito kung manonood ka ng YouTube. As well as kung manonood ka ng Netflix or Amazon Prime dahil naka widevine level 1 na to. So full HD resolution po yung maasahan nyo sa mga papanoorin nyo on Netflix and Amazon Prime. Kung mahilig kayo sa Rings of Power, guys, I suggest panoorin nyo yung series na yun. One of my favorite series right now. Alright, so usapang battery naman. Actually, isa to sa mga main highlights nila para dito sa phone na to. So meron tong 4,500 mAh na battery but yung fast charging niya is capable of 44 watts fast charging. So makakakuha kayo ng around 58% na battery in just 30 minutes. So expect to charge this from 0 to 100% in about an hour. And for battery endurance naman, makakaasa kayo a full day's worth of usage dito sa phone na to. Depending of course on your usage, your mileage may vary. Pero sa use case ko na ginamit ko to for photo taking, some games, umabot naman ako ng full day without having to recharge it. And actually, kaya nyo pang extend to the next day. Kung super heavy user kayo, of course, you can expect to drain your battery 
after just one day of using it. Alright guys, so yun po yung quick review natin ng Vivo V25e. Sa halagang 17,999 pesos. Pwede nyo na po itong mabilis soon sa online store on September 24. And magiging available na rin po ito sa mga physical stores, sa Vivo concept stores, and mga kiosk nila on October 1. And just in case na wala ka pang cash na pambili ng Vivo V25e, pwede nyo po itong makuha through home credit or credit card. Ilalagay ko po yung details dito. Para naman sa mga maagang bibili ng Vivo V25e, meron pong free SIM card na kasama as well as free TWS. Lahat po ng links ilalagay ko dyan sa description box just in case na gusto nyo nang bumili online. Kung tatalungin nyo ako, ano kaya ang number one reason para kunin nyo ang Vivo V25e? I would say maybe for the competitive camera when it comes to photos as well as the design. Yung design niya talaga ng yung ibabaw kung gusto mo ng gold color na phone at this price range na maganda yung performance eh ito na yon yung Vivo V25e but again sabi ko kanina kung hanap nyo is more performance power user ka talaga you might wanna look at phones na merong chipset na Dimensity 8100 pero again kung casual user ka lang naman and you really don't mind na super sagad yung power performance mo this is something that you can consider lalo na sa design niya na napakaganda and elegant and trendy but I definitely know na marami sa mga viewers ko ay power users so I'm sure alam ko na yung mga thoughts nyo pero let me know in the comment section kung anong tingin nyo sa Vivo V25e is it something that you would consider alright guys so hanggang dito na po muna yung video natin kung may mga katanungan pa kayo tungkol sa Vivo V25e, let me know in the comment section and I'll try to answer them all. And kung gusto pang manood ng mga videos ko, meron po akong mga ililink dyan. I'm sure magugustuhan nyo yan. So hanggang sa susunod, ako nga pala ulit si Janus ng Pinoy Tech Dad. Kita-kita ulit tayo.